Hello everyone, welcome to day 23rd of Every Read Code Challenge and I hope all of you are having a great time. The question that we have in today is clone graph. After a very long time, we are seeing a graph problem and here in this question, we are given a graph. What we need to do, we need to create a deep copy of it. We need to return the cloned graph as a result. Uh, here, uh, the node class has the value that the current node hold and the list of neighbors or at the connections that this node has with other nodes. Also, it is specified that the graph is undirected in nature. These are few pointers that you need to keep in mind while understanding this question. Without further ado, let's quickly walk through the presentation that I have created for this and I'll be telling you the algo as well as the test case walkthrough in the PPT. So let's quickly hop onto it. Clone graph lead code 133. It's a medium level question on lead code and I totally feel the same. We'll be using one of the graph traversal techniques. Here, I'll my favorite is BFS approach, so I'll use that. You can parallelly use the DFS approach as well. But my favorite is BFS and that's the reason I'm using it today. So the graph is something like this. We have nodes as one, two, three, and four. And one has connection with two, one has connection with three, one has connection with four. As a result of which, the adjacency matrix of one is connected with two, three, four. 2 is connected with 1, 3, 3 is connected with 1, 2, 4, and 4 is connected with 1, 3. So what do we do in typical graph problems using the BFS technique? We create a queue. Therefore, we'll definitely go ahead and create a queue. Also, we need to keep track of what all nodes have been created in the past corresponding to the original graph. I'll use a map where the key would be type node and the value again would be of type node. This will signify, the key will signify the original node in the original graph. So node in original graph, I'm calling it as OG. And the value would be the new node in the new graph. So let's call it NG. I hope this is clear to you. We are keeping track of what all nodes have been created in the past with respect to the original graph. And let's get started. Let's assume the first node that is given to us is 1. So what do I do? Uh, since it's a first node, I'll simply add this node into my queue as a default case. Along with it, I'll create a new node corresponding to 1. Let's call it 1 dash. So 1 dash has been created. And uh, along with it, I'll put this information in my map, stating that corresponding to 1, we have a new node named 1 dash. Pretty awesome. Let's proceed ahead. And now let's follow the typical way of BFS traversal. What do we do? We pull out the topmost element from the queue. So this gets pulled out. We check all the neighbors of one. What are the neighbors of one? We have two, we have three, we have four. Going forward, we'll check whether these nodes are present in the map or not. They are not present right now. So as a result of which, let's walk through one by one we'll look out for 2. So is 2 present in my map? 2 is not present in my map. As a result of which, I'll simply create a new node named 2 dash and put this information in my map. So corresponding to 2, we have created a new node 2 dash. Along with that, I'll put this information back into the queue. That means we have to traverse over 2. Along with that, I'll also pull in the corresponding node for one out of my map, which is one dash, and I'll create a link between one dash and two dash. So there are three steps involved. The first one is you check out for the neighbors of one. What are the neighbors of one, two, three, and four. We'll walk through each neighbor. We'll pull out uh, uh, the neighbor and we'll check whether it's part of the map or not. If it is not part of the map, we'll go and create a new node, which we have done here, two comma two dash. We'll push two into the queue Along with that, we will set the connection between one dash and two dash. Let's do the same things for the next node as well. Let's do it for three. The next iteration would be over three. So we have a connection between one and three. What do we do? We check whether it is present in my map or not. It, since it's not present, what do we do? We create a new node named three dash and we add it into the map. So three comma three dash gets added into the map. 
as the next step what do we do we add 3 into the queue so 3 gets added into the queue along with it we establish the connection between 1 dash and 3 dash so corresponding to 1 dash a new node gets a new link gets created up till 3 dash so far we are pretty good going ahead next we see is 4 uh, again we will check whether it's part of the map or not it's not part of the map what do we do we create a new node 4 comma 4 dash we'll push this information into the queue along with this we'll set 1 dash with 4 dash so a new connection has been established between 1 dash and 4 dash right now we have walked through all the neighbors of 1 and next we'll move ahead in our BFS traversal let me just change the color of pen for better understanding and this time we pull out 2 so 2 gets pulled out what do we see we check all its neighbors of 2 so what are the neighbors of 2 we have 1 and 3 so let's iterate over them one by one so what do we have the first one that we have is 1 we check whether it's part of the map or not it's part of the map yes that means the corresponding new node can be easily retrieved we don't have to recreate it so what is the corresponding new node for one it is one dash we'll simply go and create a new connection of two dash with one dash pretty awesome and no more insertions are needed into the queue let's proceed ahead the next node that we see is three do we have a node corresponding to three in my map yes it does exist that means we don't have to recreate a new node so three will retrieve three dash from using it and we will establish a new connection between two dash and three dash so a new connection gets established between two dash and three dash pretty awesome then this node is gone let's proceed ahead next we are going to retrieve three from the queue so three gets retrieved from the queue and we will check the connections what all exist in the original map we have two we have one two and four so first let's pull out one is one part of my map yes it does exist as a result of which we'll retrieve the new node corresponding to one from this map we have one dash and we'll create a new connection between three dash and one dash so a new connection gets established between three dash and one dash let's proceed ahead next we see is two do we see a node corresponding to two in my map yes it does exist we have two dash present corresponding to two so we'll retrieve this information from this map and we'll establish a new connection between three dash and two dash let's proceed ahead next we see is four we check whether it's part of the map it's part of the map so we have four dash corresponding to four we'll retrieve it up and we will establish a new connection between three dash and four dash we are done with the iteration with three let's proceed ahead next we see is four so four gets pulled out from the queue and we iterate over all connections of four what are those one comma three so let's pull out one first is one part of my map yes it is part of your map and we'll, we'll extract the corresponding node in my new graph which is one dash so we create a new connection between four dash comma one dash let's proceed ahead next we see is three we check whether it's part of the map it is part of the map so as a result of which we will extract the corresponding node for three which is three dash and we'll establish a new connection between four dash and three dash with this we have completed all the iteration for all the elements present in my queue and we are done with cloning of the graph finally you can see we have find we have cloned the entire adjacency list and cre recreated new nodes corresponding to the original graph the time complexity of this approach is order of v plus e you are doing typical bfs traversal and let's quickly hop on to the present uh, the coding section where we'll conclude this approach i'll exactly follow the same steps as i have talked here so let's get started here i have created a map and it has two parts the key would be no of type node and the value again would be of type node this represents the node in my original graph this represents the node in my new graph along with this i have created a queue the generic type again is node moving ahead i create a new node and i set the value of my node.val to my new node.val i put this information in my map along with this i put this information in my queue as well the first step that we did in the presentation going ahead the typical way of writing the bfs approach if while queue is not empty i extract the size 
while size minus minus is greater than zero, I'll pull out the original node from the uh, queue and I iterate over all the neighbors of my original node. We call it child. And if my map doesn't contain this child node, what do we do in such cases? We simply recreate new child. New child dot val is equal to child dot val. Q dot offer the new uh, the child. We put the information into the queue. Uh, along with this, we put this information in the map as well. Child comma new child. Once we are done with this, what do we do? We extract the new list node corresponding to the original node in my map that simply represents one dash value corresponding to one, two dash value corresponding to two. And we set the neighbors at this particular node using the information present in my map. New list node dot neighbors dot add map dot get child. This is very important. People do mess up around this statement. So carefully have a look at line 26. This is the crux of the problem. Once we are done with this, we simply return back map dot get the node corresponding to your root value where you're starting the graph from. This brings me to the end of today's session. I am attaching the playlist of all the graph problems that we have done using the BFS and the DFS approach for those who are interested and like today's session can have a look at it. Also, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for viewing it. Have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from Coding Decoded. I'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question. But till then, goodbye.